I'm generally quite suspicious of any uh, claims to universalism, uh, generally because they all seem to emanate from within the West and tend to historically have been tied to expansionist projects. We don't want equality with unequal men, and we can't have equality in an unequal world. A world where wealth flows upstream, a world of gross and growing inequality that has brought us to the brink of a planet crisis. Feminism as a term is so misunderstood that rethinking feminism is also finding a new language in which we can anchor the change that we want to see. When you travel in Turkey, all across the Middle East, you will notice that streets belong to men, public squares belong to men, particularly after certain hours, cities belong to men. So there is a backlash. Well, welcome everybody, and thank you very much to, for coming to what promises to be, I think, a really interesting debate. I know I'm looking forward to it, so I hope that you are too. Uh, this debate is part of a series in association with Unilever, which is trying to explore feminism and gender from cross-cultural perspectives. We've had a lot of debates on feminism in Britain, in, in the US, in the West, uh, and I think it's actually very interesting to try to make it a bit more international. Uh, Unilever have very kindly sponsored not just this debate, but also three more at the How the Light Gets In Festival in May. And first of all, I'm going to introduce all our panellists, and then I'll tell you what the debate is going to be about. First of all, we have Miriam Francois on my far right, stage uh, left, uh, who's a political commentator, theorist and broadcaster with a focus on France. Uh, I know French female political journalists, my sort of job, uh, rose up as one quite recently to complain about how sexist um, the politicians were, so I'm sure you've had a lot to do there. She writes for uh, The New Statesman, The Guardian and The Huffington Post and is also doing a DPhil in Middle Eastern Studies at Oxford where she's researching Islamic political movements in Morocco. Uh, Elif Shafak is an award-winning novelist from Turkey. She's been published in more than 40 countries. She's been awarded a Chevalier of the Order of Arts and Letters. Um, and she's also been an outspoken defender of women's rights, minority rights, and freedom of expression. Uh, Finn Mackay is an activist and academic described by The Guardian as a world-changing woman for her political work defending women's rights. She's the... Uh, it's nothing, is it? <laughs> Forget the world. It's the Milky Way in the galaxy. You're Absolutely, do next. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, she's the founder of the London Feminist Network and a regular public commentator on feminist issues, particularly male violence towards women, and is also senior lecturer in sociology at UE, University of the West of England in Bristol. And Lena Nair uh, is Chief Human Resources Officer at Unilever, which is actually a hell of achievement because she is the first woman ever to hold that post in Unilever's several hundred year history, and is on the executive board. Uh, and before that, she had a wide range of management jobs in India and South Asia and spearheaded the Career by Choice programme, which was helping women rejoin the workforce after a career break. So pretty diverse panel. And we're going to be, we, we're going to be talking about whether feminism fights for equality for everyone. Who's doing the fighting? Who are they defending? And is it right for women in the West to fight for equality for women in the developing world? Or should they be fighting for it for themselves? Um, from the right to wear headscarves, to the refusal of contraception, ideas of what is fair and what is equal vary dramatically across the world. So does feminism lack a universal goal? And if it does, is that because it's an impossible dream? And is there anything wrong with white Western liberal feminists, which I suppose I would describe myself as, fighting for the rights of women from different cultures? Should we recognise that feminism means different things in different places, or should we all be fighting for the same thing? So the format is going to be that each of our speakers is going to do a three-minute pitch on should feminism pursue a universal goal and can there be one, and then we're going to start discussing amongst ourselves. So first of all, Miriam. Well, just in three minutes, a few points that I wanted to make. Um, 
I'm generally quite suspicious of any uh, claims to universalism, uh, generally because they all seem to emanate from within the West and tend to historically have been tied to expansionist projects uh, and more recently to various forms of imperialism. And uh, as such, I think that they've the discourse on universalism has functioned uh, as a supporting ideology of imperialism uh, and continues to do so in many ways. And, and certainly um, feminism has been no exception. We saw, for example, the uh, co-optation of feminist ideals uh, when it came to Afghanistan, when it's come to Iraq. Uh, but we see it more locally as well. Um, I've worked on uh, more UK based stories related to Muslim women and uh, the extent to which predominant liberal views concerning religion take precedence over the actual values and ideals that help women from minority communities find their own version of what they would consider to be emancipation or balance. Um, and therefore, uh, I think to a large extent, what parades as universalism uh, masquerades as a form of um, cultural imperialism um, and ultimately functions as a means of perpetuating cultural hierarchies, the notion that we in the West are purveyors of a superior way of looking at the world and that we need to um, uh, help others benefit from that. And if they don't want our help, then we'll mil militarily assist them uh, in seeing what's best for them. Um, I'm also suspicious of discourses about uh, universalism within feminism without a broader discussion about inequality more broadly. So um, to paraphrase uh, bell hooks, how, how do we talk about men and women being equal when all men with a capital M aren't equal? Um, uh, clearly there are uh, social and economic uh, hierarchies still governing our global system. Uh, and it seems a little bizarre to me to talk about equality between women uh, in Dhaka and women in London uh, when the economic differences between people in London and people in Dhaka are so extreme. Um, and finally, I don't agree with the gender blind model, which I think has become quite uh, dominant in the feminist discourse. I think what again gets discussed in terms of gender blindness is often the idea that we as women have to imitate male standards in order to achieve equality. And actually, to my mind, I don't know that men have been doing that good a job. <laughs> so maybe we don't want to replicate what they've been doing. Maybe we need to find our own way of doing things. And maybe they've got something to learn from that rather than just trying to imitate what men have been doing and considering that to be our version of equality. I think that's chasing uh, false dreams and I think it's chasing also uh, a notion of emancipation which is tied into uh, our capitalist system which considers the only value of a human being to be based on their productive capacity. So your ability to produce X amount of money is what your value as a human is worth. And maybe we as women who actually, you know, produce real life human people and I think much more valuable things than just money um, could, could offer alternative views on uh, what is valuable, what we should consider to be, um, yeah, valuable within society more broadly. Well, I'd like to start by saying there's probably as many different definitions of feminism as there are people who call themselves feminists. Um, for me, feminism is a global political movement for the liberation of women and society based on equality for all people. Now, however we define it, um, what is agreed is that this movement is in resurgence today, um, a resurgence that began unfolding um, in the early 2000s here in this country and indeed around the world. Sometimes it's called a third um, or even a fourth wave. Feminist activism is visible once again online and on the streets. Um, commentary and feminist political theory is also being seen in the mainstream in a way that it just wasn't before.